All right, so this is for the recording, not for the people that are in here. What we're doing right now is getting reoriented to the progress that was made over break. Uh, Sarah has been working on the front end portion of this project. Mike has been working on the back end. And then whoever's watching this video in the future, you can obviously email me or Discord a message to me. And then we can figure out a role for you then. All right, I'm back. All right, so while we're waiting for Mike, Sarah, um, let's go back over your portion here. Uh, obviously, you didn't make all this. Uh, <laughs> trust me, you, you, you're plenty good. It just takes a little time. All right. So, do you remember the logic that was behind this? Like, give me the high-level overview of what you remember. Uh, both of those can be true. <laughs> uh, so... Yep. Yep. That is all correct. So, if we come back over here to Shadow Down, or at least showing you what's happening here. So, what I did was I hit this label right here. Okay? You see where it says Shadow Root right here? Okay, so this entire thing is a uh, Shadow Down. What this means is that it has its own scope. Now, I have it open right now. So I can address uh, this through JavaScript if I wanted to. So I could start here at username and then go into it. I don't do that because uh, I don't have to. So I could close this off and then use a class property to get information from it. So a shadow DOM essentially is, think of it as a scope, a new scope for HTML. Right, so if I had complex JavaScript in here and I didn't want a event to propagate through the entire DOM tree, I could close this off and isolate this component completely. All right, that's all that is. And hopefully, so, it would... so let's say this input container here creates a event it would bubble it would bubble up to input text right here and then stop here it wouldn't leave this so if i had another click event on this it would never get there all right so those are going to be useful like in the future and it is how i'm going to solve this problem and then it's going to be like oh yeah I can use this. Uh, these things tend to present themselves, not necessarily uh, immediately obvious why it'd be helpful. Uh, so there is a very brief overview of that. Um, okay, input error. Okay, that's a separate thing. All right. Mike, did you get that uh, class as an intro to database or database concepts? One, so intro. Okay. Uh, are you doing anything with access or are you actually doing it for real? Good. 
Yeah, uh, the professor before Spear, he would do it in uh, Microsoft Access. So you did everything through a GUI. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so what we're going to do today is this sh let's get this wired up so you guys have both uh, a connection here. So from front and the back end, we're going to show how to do this. So I'm going to do the harder one for you, and then I'm going to hand off the easier one to Sarah so she can practice. And then Mike you'll get the easier one as well for just signing in. So let's go ahead and minimize that. Let's go back to the code. No, but I probably should. Do you want a copy? Okay, so I'm zipping that now, and then when uh, hopefully it's small enough to put in Discord. Doesn't look like it. Nope. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a uh, Google share once this is done. Actually, I'm just going to share it now. Screw it. Now I'm going to give both of you guys editing rights. I would prefer it if you just download a copy. Okay, so back over here. That's what I want. All right, so what we're gonna to have to do now is we're gonna to have to get this information off of the DOM and then we gotta send it to the server. All right, so we gotta get ourselves oriented. Main controller, we don't need this immediately. We will in a second. We're definitely gonna need login Okay, we might need global. Stop. There we go. Okay, redirects, notification, client. Okay. Let's go back to login. Okay. Create new user. Sign up. Okay, so it looks like I already did a good chunk of this. Check for login errors. Okay, so I'm going to walk through this logic real quick for both of you, but mostly for Sarah. All right. So let's go back to the browser real quick. I'm going to refresh, go back here. Okay, so we have one, two, three, technically four inputs, okay? We need to make sure that username is unique. We need to make sure that password and password match are the same. And then it doesn't matter in terms of if this is filled out or not, but we gotta get the value either professor or student out of this, okay? Make sense? Okay, so we gotta create a error checking system that allows us to do that. So right here, 
get element by ID, username, get input value. All right. So have you ever seen this before, Sarah? Okay. It's because you haven't. It's custom. So, right. So this dot syntax is from a class. All right. So if you know, if we come back to username here, bum -a -bum. our username new account, I'm pretty sure that's what we called it. Uh, just plain, oh, check for login errors. I need new user errors. Reset errors, check for new account errors. Okay, so we're in this one. So username new account. This is what we're looking for, correct? Okay, so if we come back to the DOM and I pull this actually this docket so we can actually have that. So right here's username. Username new account. It's right here. Okay, you see this hyphen here? Okay, a web component has to have this hyphen. So as soon as you see a hyphen like this, you know it's a web component. It's because of the parser for HTML. So your normal tags don't have hyphens. So you have to distinguish between a custom tag and a normal tag. And, that, and that's how they decided to do it. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. All right, so you immediately know this is a custom tag. Where did we store all of our web components? Not a trick question. Web components, yeah, that, that's pretty awesome, isn't it? So if we come down here to web components, what do you think is likely the one that created the user input for username. Yeah. So what I'm trying to get at here is that everything is named exactly what it does, right? So your name and scheme definitely matters. And if you get to a point where the name and scheme doesn't make sense, it might be worth creating a new component simply to make it make sense, even if it's not technically memory efficient. So it becomes a uh, dichotomy in terms of the balance between maintainability and performance. So now that we're here, we know that this works, all right? We also know that that function, that dot syntax for getting that inside of a function has to be inside of a class. So there's a class, all right? And then there's that function. Okay, so get input value, return this shadow root, get element by ID, which is input. So if I come back up here, right there's that ID of input. And then I'm getting that dot value. And then I'm returning it. Make sense? Okay, so that's how we're getting that value out of that web component. And I did that for the rest of these. All right, so here's our values. Now, the one thing I am seeing is this right here. So I got check username. Let's go back to our controller and see what I did over there. Okay, right there's check username, and it looks like I did some work here. So we got Professor DB is username free. All right. So no Professor DB check. Okay, so what this is doing, or at least what my notes are, because I kind of forgot why I did it like this, is if a student ever became a professor, you know, like me, 
uh, this database would be corrupted. All right. So we would have, or at least it'd be corrupted for that user. So we have to have a unique username uh, for both professors and students. So what we're doing here is professor is username free. We're going to get a value back, free professor, which is gonna be a bool. Free professor equal, triple equals false. And then if, if the value is false. So if we get, hey, this username is not available and it was from the professor database, send back to the client that username is false or username free is false. Does that make sense? That was a big delay. Here, I'll do it like this. Okay. Yes. This one, this one, this one. Ignore. Okay, database object object. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is that I'm going to, oh, oh wait, no, I don't need to do that. I'm going to do username here. I'm gonna submit. This should send to the server. Network error. Press ex exited with that. object Let's go back here submit this username Briggs J A okay go why is it working now okay so now our username Briggs J A we are checking to see if that username is free tracking so far all right we got a value back of free professor that is a bool and it has the value of true this means that the username of Briggs JA is free so we're going to compare it here does free professor triple equals false Yes. That's what this would equate to. So is free professor equal to false? It's right there. It's up, I'm hovering over it. Okay. It says true, free professor equals true, right? It is right in front of your face, yeah. Yeah, so we all make mistakes, Sarah, it's okay. All right, so true, this statement is false, all right? So what's gonna happen is that we're gonna come down here, this true statement's gonna run, and now this student database is going to run. So if I come down here, okay. Username, still Briggs JA. Now this student database is going to run. Now we got free student back. All right, this is true. So is this statement, is this statement correct? Free student triple equals false. No. So it's going to come down here, right? So free student triple equals true. Now, I'm going to come down here. Now I'm sending back the result 
that username does in fact equal true. Also notice that every other spot where it could have failed, username false, username false. Okay? Alright, so now what this is going to do is we're going to come back to this fetch statement and now dot then is going to run. All right. Now I don't have a debugger on this, so it's just going to run uh, and I haven't stopped it. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of these because I think it makes sense to you now. And then I'm going to come back to the client. Refresh new account. Briggs.ja. Submit. Okay, we're still sending back true, so that is working. Check username, debugger. Why did I not get anything? Why, oh why, did I not get anything? Why is this just data.result too? What was I thinking? Okay, so come back over here. So we need, this is most certainly JSON function, and this is also most certainly async. And this is also most certainly await. Okay, so there's that. Hopefully that runs better. Let's try this again. Refresh. New account. Why? Okay, so I have some sort of logic error going on here. Username, okay, it's not any of those that is running. Check for new account errors. Get errors, if window worker. Oh! That's kind of annoying. Sarah, you should really stop me when I'm over motivated. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, nope, 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 nope. I mean, eventually we need to get you to this point where you're doing things like this, and then if not, it comes down here. Oh, that might be a thing too. If. Message. Where is post message? It's going to the worker. So inside of the so that it's not it's not this at all. It's not this at all. It is over here. Where's my worker? This one. It is this one. There we go. Okay, save that. Save that. I don't think this is going to work, but we need to try. There's that. 
Hey, debugger. Awesome, awesome. That's good stuff. I'm excited. All right, so clearly you've been tracking all along, right? That was confident. Good for you. It, it's true, yeah. So uh, what's happening here? Let's go back to the code so you can actually read it. All right, so remember, oh, you weren't there for that presentation. Sad. Okay. Do you know what a web worker is? Okay, web workers is multi-threaded JavaScript. All right. There, as long as you don't need something off of the DOM, you should be using a web worker. Yeah, there's a reason why I haven't talked about it. So, it would be confusing, yeah. All right, so, but you need to know it at this level, all right? So, web worker, we're going to open up a new thread so we can run, let's come over here, so we can run this fetch call and we can do it synchronously. Because it's on a different thread, we don't have to worry about uh, this blocking the main thread for any reason. Okay. Now, I got async here. Eh, okay, whatever. Yeah, I'll, I'll roll with it. So we're going to go check username. Everything else is the same right here. And then we're going to get that information back, which we already have because we hit that debugger. Okay, so let's come back over here. Here's that JSON data. Username equals true. And that's what we're expecting, correct? Okay. If we come down here, JSON data, username equals true. Now we're going to compare it to false. If it's false, we're going to present this error, username error 2. Okay. Because it's true, we don't have to worry about the error because the username is free. So if I continue, notice that only password is required that shows up. And we still have these other ones. So I'm going to make a password now. There's that. We'll make it a, a, a student account. That's fine. And then I'm going to hit submit. And I think I didn't, haven't sent anything to the server. Okay, yeah, I haven't sent anything yet. So let's come back over here. Let's get rid of this because that definitely works. I really should go back through and add more notes. Anyways. Okay, log in. So we're sending that information back to the main thread, which is right here. Username count, post message, we got all of these. Post message, this one, this one, this one, this one. These are all false. I'm not sure why I did it like this. Maybe, maybe it will present itself why I did it like that. Anyways. So we're getting all of our information back from that thread, okay, on message. So what do you think this is? No. No. That's a really good hint. What's this? Yep. So what do you think this does? All 
How about this one? Yay, bike. So, like this one that I did at the thread that Toby says post message. Mm, yeah, so that's what we're looking for. And that is an event within itself. Okay, so now that we got that information back from that new thread that we created, we're back on the main thread. So now we can check to see what type of errors that we have. Okay. If we have no errors, which is down here, if error triple equals false, create new user. So let's go find create new user and see where I left off. Which is this. Create new user, fetch, sign up. This definitely looks like it was done. So let's save that real quick. Let's slide this over. Sign up. Sign up. Bang. So what I'm doing right now is opening up the database to see if, oh, this is new. I don't like different, they should stop that. Okay, uh, students, I see a document. Hey, I'm in here. Okay, so what ended up happening and now we're going to start focusing more towards Mike at the second. So let's put a debugger there. And then for Sarah, let's, let's put a debugger here. I'm going to go back to the browser. We're going to refresh. We're going to make a new account. We're going to do Briggs JA. So what do you guys think is going to happen here? Radio silent. Supper, Justin. That username is taken now, right? Because we created that account. So if we come back to this, that username of Briggs JA is taken. It's right there. Okay. So now let's go ahead and change this. Oh, eight, six, nine, eight. That's a thing I can remember. And now I'm going to submit. Notice the debugger here. So we got username, this, we got password, and account type. We're going to send that to the server. Okay. Now I am sending these as username, password, and then account type. So it's exactly the same. So if we come over here to, let's come back over here. Now we're officially on the server. So we went to the controller, we hit up this route of sign up. It's a post. And notice that Briggs J or Briggs8658, password, UX UI hats, and then account type of students. Okay. So here we go. Now, oh, I see what I'm doing here. All right. So, Mike, what do you think is happening here? On the okay, so when is this going to run? As well, yes, but. I'm hovering over your hint. When account type is student, right? So this down here is going to be false. 
account type student equals professor? Nope. That is a no. Okay, so what we're going to have to do right here, because this you guys definitely haven't seen before. So I got to go over there and show you what's going on. So student DB, great professor, and remember res. That's going to be important. So let's go find student DB. It's going to be under models, database folder, student functions. Okay. Here's create student. Here's res. All right. You know what res stands for, Mike? Yes, result. All right, so child, we're making a new fork. So just like on the front end, the back end JavaScript is still single threaded. So if we hold on, did I have a problem with this? Mindless threads and oh, I know what I'm doing here. Okay, so statement still true, uh, just like on the the front end, the back end JavaScript is still single threaded. So when you have opportunities to go multi threaded like this for like encryption, that takes a little bit, and JavaScript's really bad at it, then you need to go ahead and take advantage of that situation. And where did it go? Right there's threads. Okay, we're going to open up encryption. Process on message. Looks familiar, right, Sarah? Message. Okay, so password. We're getting it from message. We're bringing in the crypto library. We're bringing in the random string library. Our secret, which is a seed, technically. We're going to do some random stuff. All right. We're going to create a SHA-256 hash with our secret seed. It's going to, we're going to update our password. And then we're going to send back a doc ID and a password. And a uh, doc ID is the same thing we're doing with the password. Okay. So if we do this and I hit this, now that we're back here, doc ID that long string password really long string okay so we just encrypted this password make sense okay so right here's doc ID first name last name student ID is no okay so what what's happening here for these three because we wanted blackboard to fill this out uh, the school is changing from Blackboard to, oh, uh, what is that stupid software called? Anyways, it's changing. It's going to a better one. So, <laughs> yes, it is good. It is terrible. Uh, so we're adding in the username, which is necessary, and then the password, which is necessary. And... And then once we uh, get this information from, say, whatever API that we're going to use in the future, then we can fill in this information later. So we're making this. And then after this database function runs, which is asynchronous, we're either going to catch an error or we're going to use res and send back false, stating that no error has occurred. And then if I go back to the browser, let's see what happened. Looks like nothing. So that looks like where I left off. So if I come back here, error, count error, render student home, render professor home. So if I come back to the render file and I minimize this and I minimize all of these, It doesn't look like I've even started those. Okay.
Are people alive? Okay. On a scale from one to I'm going to be lost forever, how confused are you? Okay. Yeah, uh, that's all I was going for. And until you start using it, you're not going to truly understand it until you have to troubleshoot it for yourself. So what I think we can do from here is that we can give Sarah the sign-in uh, to do whatever free time that she has to do that. And then we'll give Mike... Uh, the sign-in as well, which is significantly easier than what I did for this entire thing, but it gives you examples of absolutely 100% professional code. Like, this is completely optimized. All right? Okay, so is that a good place to, to stop for you guys? Yeah, so if I come back to the browser here and I hit cancel, username, password, submit. So I need to be able to sign in with the account that's been made already. Okay, and then for Mike, you need to come over here and do sign in right here. And it's gonna be very similar to sign up where you're gonna need username and password you just won't need a count type. So what you're going to have to do is do something similar here inside of the controller. Okay. And then you're going to have to come over to your database functions and find student by username, blah, 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 blah. Create student. I don't think. Oh, wait, no, you're going to be finding by Is username free? It looks like you're going to have to make another one. Yeah, it looks like I didn't do it. So you're going to have to make a, a function, something along the lines of a sign-in, student sign-in, or professor sign-in. Actually, let's see if I did it over here for professor. Okay, great professor. Add class. No, I didn't do it on either. So yeah, sign-in for professor, sign-in for student. Uh, and then Sarah is going to send you information. And I don't know how we're going to integrate this together. Um, uh, RDP at the school? Well, I don't, I don't have my desktop there anymore. Uh... Well, I used to have my desktop at the school, and I was going to run it on that. But now that's at my house for my server that I definitely need. Maybe I can get my hands on a relatively old computer and then dump a drive in there where it's not going to be completely awful. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go talk. Uh, Raspberry Pi, no, but there are small form factor x86s out there. Uh, actually, uh, Sarah, your laptop, your Surface one, is that still kicking around? Okay, uh, yeah, go ahead and ask him, see what's up with that. Uh, for, for both of you, work on your portions of it for the next couple days. I'm assuming it's going to take you guys a little bit of time to get your head around how this is formatted. Uh, and then, 
we will talk about how we're going to do remote access to particular things. So, uh, okay, so what you need to do, let's go ahead and close these. So there's the render page. You don't have to do anything there. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so blah, 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 blah. check for login errors. So I already did the error checking over here for you. Okay, so you see this login user? I don't see this function anywhere. So you're gonna to have to create a new function called login user. And then you are going to pass in username, password, like that. Going to create a new function. Function login user. Okay, username. Oh, password. Open that up, fetch call, you're going to give sign in, okay, and then you're going to do the rest of this fetch call, and then you're going to have a then callback function, like so. And then you're going to have a if statement here. Log in good. If login good and student, then you're going to send them to render student. Else, actually, if else log in error actually you're going to need three of these if else log in good and professor render professor display error if there's an error and that's it I say that's it, but it's going to take you a little bit. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so Mike, your side, are, are you confused on anything? Yeah, that's all you need. Get started, and then the worst that's going to happen for either one of you is that I go... Uh, Let's not. Let's, let's go ahead and fix this. Uh, and that, that's the worst that's ever going to happen. Uh, and then we'll just go through and, hey, this is what's happening here, so on and so forth. Uh, obviously, reach out to me if you have any questions. But this is the type of project where if you can do this, uh, both of you are going to be better than the Web2 students I was teaching today. Yeah. So... Yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then Mike has got to send back if it's a student or a professor, and then if there's an error or not. So that for you is going to be data async. Uh, you're going to have to parse this. So uh, data equals await uh, data dot JSON, and then like data dot good, data dot good or data dot instead of student it's going to be uh, account uh, 
type, something like that. It doesn't have to be exactly these names, they just have to make sense. Mike has got to send back this data to you, and then you got to just whatever you, he sent you. So this could easily be student account, right? Like that. So, yeah, it just depends on what Mike sends you back, and I recommend that you guys communicate with each other at a... And if it gets bad enough, I will determine what variable name should be. I strongly prefer if we keep it like this. Username, password, and account type, so it's the same on both backend and frontend. All right. Okay, I... I mean, yeah, have it done by next Tuesday, ideally, but I would work on it in the next couple of days because you're probably going to have questions. All right. Mike? All right. So I will see you guys in class, and uh, I think that's all I got. So thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you later.